Hey everybody, what's up? It's Devin Lavore and Michelle Lavore coming, coming at, at you. So the first thing we want to do is we just want to say welcome to the new subscribers. Yes. You guys are awesome. Welcome to the party. Yeah. Stay as long as you like. Um, we talk about lots of different things, but um, the the next thing we want to say is thank you guys for your support. Like huge yes. thanks. Um, I've been trying to keep up with the uh, the thank you emails and just I just want to get that out the way to begin with. And um, so then I guess we can just jump into what happened last night, right? Yeah. So last night was amazing. Um, what were we talking about? I don't even remember what we were talking about. But the bottom line is we were having a conversation and it inspired this, uh, or I just saw it in a vision, this uh, mold, like a casting mold for like if you're making pottery or ceramics yeah. or something like that. I saw that and I saw it being like broken, you mm -hmm. know? And I just felt like the Lord was saying through that, that he was, he was, he was breaking the mold. Yeah. You know? I actually, I think it was also in response to, because we were, it, oh, oh, I know what happened. I remember what happened now. Hey, everybody, what's up? Anyway, uh, <laughs> what happened was I was thinking about Christian Pierre. Oh, yeah. And I was going like, what's going on with Christian Pierre? I feel like we haven't seen a video of his in a while. And I just kept thinking about him. And I was like, I didn't realize it was the Lord until later. And I was just like, oh, okay, what's what's going on with... I was like, so let me go check, you know? We were already talking, and then we, we got done talking, and I just got online. I was like, let me go see what what's going on with him, because I just feel like we haven't seen a video from him in a while. Lo and behold, he had literally made a video like 23 minutes yeah. before that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, right then, I was like, oh, I haven't even seen the video. It was titled, Now... And I haven't seen the video. I just, I just there's something in here for us yeah. or for me. I think could be. You know, you you're always in the process of processing, mm -hmm. right? And so we got on the video, and he, uh, I would suggest watching the video because I don't want to give his video away. Yeah. But based on the uh, content of the video, it caused us to look up the scriptures that he was referencing. Yeah. And I was just like, oh wow, this is really really good. But for whatever reason, from that, oh, it was it was probably the the breaking the bonds. It's like yeah. I, I afflict you. I afflicted you, because basically it was like what you're going through. I know has been distressing and afflicting, and has been very difficult. But I'm the one who put you through it. Yes. Now, in the context of the scripture, it was because of their sins. Yeah. But in 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 the context of forming us into what God wants us to be, that's still Him afflicting us. Yeah. You know, kind of like Biggest Loser. <laughs> They afflict you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Those people get afflicted. But then afterwards, they come out, like Lana Vosser said, a word we still have not read yet. <laughs> you come out ten times better. Yeah. You know? And so, so in the vision, I saw this casting mold being broken mm -hmm. over our lives. You know? it was just I just saw it being broken. I, I, I'm still praying about, the pro, about how it actually applies. But the bottom line is, I knew... It was the Lord saying, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting yeah. ready to break the mold. I'm breaking it right now. It's just, I saw a crack open. And I was like, whoa. Kind of like the, when I got that vision of the arc Art. door open. Yep. It just cracked open. And it was like, yes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so I was like, wow. I really, it was just another vision of like we're at the end kind of thing and I know we've been saying that a lot you know I think we've been saying that this entire time we've been in Nashville yeah. for like eight months and the end game and Michelle's like well we've been in the end game since November and God's like I know it's the end game all of it everything you're going through is the end game yeah. and it's just like okay now we're in the end zone because you know the end game can be just like the last quarter but yeah. that could be 15 minutes yeah but then you get to that last part of the uh the last part of like you know the two minute warning you yeah. know what i mean or something it's like okay you're in the end zone this is that part of of the time where things are get, really getting ready to wind up and come to a complete end and yeah. you're going to shift into not just the next chapter you're going into a, a an entirely different book series yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. you're going to be done it's it's like if you're reading lord of the rings you're at the last like 20 pages of the return of the king you're just once it's done it's done yeah you know and you're going to go into a completely different thing and that's kind of like where we've been feeling like we're at yeah right so why don't you talk about what you got in in yeah. god time that kind of connects with that vision from yeah. last night 
Well, Do you um, like that segue? Yeah. <laughs> there was like really um, two things. The, the first thing that actually hit me this morning, I don't really remember what we were listening to. Lazarus? No, it was before God time. But oh. um, anyway, basically. A car video? It, no, no. <laughs> that could be a very good possibility. <laughs> but um, anyway, basically, it was. I was struck with the idea because you know we were talking about the mold, and and I was just saying how I was just really seeing how God can. He's he really has been using even even the enemy coming against oh, us yeah, yeah, yeah. as part of that mold, as part of the forming the and heat. shape. Yeah, shaping us. Yeah. <laughs> and and I was reminded because there's been, um, back in March, it was really clear that there was um, these moments where God was just like, you know, we, we could feel the enemy coming against us, but God was saying, just be at peace. And it was confusing oh, to me because I wanted to just be like, well, that. we just need to like rebuke this thing. Like, why, why aren't we doing that? And it's like, no, I just want you to be at peace. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of this idea of like, here, I, this pressure is coming against you. Can you just be at peace? And that's really what I'm trying to form and mold in you. Yeah. And it also reminded me of Job. Job did nothing <clears throat> wrong, but God allowed that allowed Satan to come into his life and basically destroy everything <laughs> apart from to take Job's life. He was not allowed to, to literally take his life. Mm -hmm. But... What did Job do? Well, he was he was silent. He was just like, I'm going to continue to praise the Lord. He gives, he takes away, but I'm going to just be here, be at peace. Mm -hmm. And and it was just like, wow. And so I just really saw very clearly today of this idea of like, you know, not like the idea that God is using even the enemy who thinks that he's gaining ground and all that, but he's actually using that to form us. Yeah. As long as we're listening to what God is saying, because there are times when, you know, okay, we got to rebuke the enemy, but there are times when God's just like, I just want you to be at peace in me. Mm -hmm. Allow me to just help this form who you are. Different strategies for yeah. different wars. Just yeah. like in the Old Testament. Yeah, and so I was just like, whoa, because I really felt like for me personally, I'm like, that's what God's been doing. He's really been allowing Satan to come in and sift his people. It's the same thing with Peter. Jesus said, um, he told Peter, you know, Satan has asked to sift you, but when you, you know, when you return, you're going to be so much stronger. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, that's really what I believe has been going on mm -hmm. for quite a while now is that people the people of God have been sifted and and it's like all right you know but God's like all right I'm I'm using this I'm using this to make you stronger to to finish that mold that I have for you and mm -hmm. fashion you the way that I want you to be mm -hmm. and and so it was just this really awesome picture and then for our, during our God time, we actually um, Joel was leading, and so he picked he picked um, the story of uh, Lazarus being yeah. raised from the dead. Yeah, and it was so good. Yeah, <laughs> so it was. Good. <laughs> I think we stopped on every clip, and we're like, "Ooh, let's That's, talk about yeah, this." Yeah, let's talk about <laughs> this and that. And um, but one of the things that I really got out of that was um, basically here is. God, well, when he was, Jesus was with his disciples and a messenger comes to them and he, the messenger is like, hey, you know, Lazarus is, he's really sick and Lazarus is really sick. <laughs> Will you come and, you know, if you come, basically he'll be well again. And, and Jesus basically said, um, his sickness Lazarus's sickness will not end in death. Mm -hmm. And we just paused on that mm -hmm. because it was like, wait, what did Jesus just say? <laughs> he said it, his sickness will not end in death. That's what the Lord said. And it's like, he doesn't lie. Wait, well, what happened to Lazarus? <laughs> he died. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Even Jesus said, Lazarus, we're going to go visit him. And it's like, he's falling asleep. It's like, oh, well, if he's asleep, he'll get better, Lord. He's like, listen, he did. D-E-D. Did. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go wake him up <laughs> yeah and it's like wait a minute how how can that be you just you know? said he wasn't gonna die yeah but now you're saying he's dead yes how is something's not right here so it was just like we were talking about how that doesn't seem to make sense but jesus spoke it so it has to be true and you know two things spoken by the lord that seem like opposing but they're true. Yeah. And we've gone through that quite a bit lately, mm-hmm. haven't we? Yeah. And so it's just interesting how this is coming up. And it's like, oh, God's teaching us something. Remember, we're in that 101 course now. Yes. We got to see things. He's going to be showing us some stuff different than what we're used yes. to. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and so it was. we talked about that, about how there are times when God says a word and then it doesn't, you're not understanding. It's like, you're looking at your circumstances. You're looking and saying, this doesn't make sense. Maybe I misheard the Lord, mm-hmm. or maybe what God said isn't isn't true. I think most, for the most part, we just think, oh, we haven't heard from the Lord. Yeah, you we, know, we okay, must have missed we it. Must have missed it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean, but I just think if anything, it's like God does speak, and there are times when things don't seem to line up the way you thought they were going to, or perhaps things have died. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, Lord. That the Lord said, hey, proclaim life over it. Proclaim life over it. And then it dies. And it's like, what? Why are you telling me to decree life over something that just died? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't make make sense. sense. You know, and of course, so then as the story continues, you know, Jesus, he goes and he ends up talking to Martha and Mary, mm-hmm. and and both of them respond. And he's not in a hurry once he gets there. No, he's not. <laughs> it's not like he just ran, ran over to the tomb and yeah. was like, "All right, Lazarus, come out." He's not going to be any more dead. Yeah. <laughs> than he was. Yeah. Or any less dead. You know. <laughs> but both Mary and Martha respond in the same way. They're like, "Lord, if you had only been here when we asked you to come." Lazarus would be alive and and Jesus is like well do you believe you know do you believe and they're like well yes of course we believe in you you know our brother he's going to be resurrected again one day and Jesus is like I am the resurrection and the life you know but it's like they didn't understand it there wasn't this there was no comprehension of really what he was saying in that moment well there was no even frame of reference yeah. for them to even imagine like oh maybe he's getting ready to raise him from the dead yeah that would be cool they're not even going to think that way yeah this is not even going to happen no and and so then they go um to the grave site to the tomb and and jesus is like hey let's roll away the stone and martha's like but lord he's he smells like he's he's been dead he's four, been dead days. four days you don't you, you don't want to do that <laughs> yeah and and of course then the story continues and they remove the stone and jesus calls lazarus out but i think what really struck me was i really felt like there are this remnant of people that god has been just working and moving in and doing so much forming and shaping with is that we're very much like both Mary and Martha because there's this sense of Lord if you would just come if you would just show up we wouldn't be having to go through this grief and this pain and this sorrow Mm -hmm. that we've been having to continue to go through (laughs) over and over and over and over again yeah and and it's just like, but, and actually there was another part that Jesus told the disciples, you know, when he was, he pretty much plainly told him, hey, Lazarus is dead, mm-hmm. you know, and he's like, but I am so thankful. He's like, I'm grateful that I wasn't there so that you guys would believe. And, oh, um, you want me to share that part? Yeah. What I got out of that? Yeah. Oh, you're, t- you're touching on my stuff. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just messing around. <laughs> but what, what, okay, yeah, so... Yeah, it was like, the Lord was like, I'm glad I wasn't there because if I had been there, you would have seen me do something that you've always seen me do. 
And that's to heal somebody who's sick. Even though it was a miracle, you would have always seen me do that thing. Yeah. You know, it's just like, okay, that's not, it's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm glad you're going with me now at this hour because now you're going to get to see something that you have never seen and it's going to open up your eyes yes. to who God really mm -hmm. is, you know, more of who he is. You are, you're already familiar with Jesus, the, the miracle worker on this level. Yeah. Mm. Now I'm taking you up to 101. I'm taking you up to a whole nother level. Yeah. I'm taking you to collegiate level Jesus miracle worker mm -hmm. <laughs> because I'm going to show you that I have authority over all things. Yes. And he just decreed, I am the resurrection and the life. Here, now let me show you. Which was constantly a thing for Jesus. Mm -hmm. He would teach something and then he would demonstrate it. Or he mm -hmm. would demonstrate and then he would teach about what he just demonstrated. Yeah. You know? So it's like, that's kind of like us, right? Is mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's what you were thinking? Yeah, I'm just, the fact that it's, I believe like God has, you know, he keeps saying like, do you believe do you believe? And it's like, well, yes, Lord, we believe. But there's this, you know, with Mary and Martha at the time, there's still just this grief because they had lost their lost their brother. And, and, and so I think there's just this a lot of grief in our hearts just because of how long it's been taking and <laughs> and and just the forming and the fashioning that that has been in some cases we feel like we're lazarus yeah you know? we, it's <laughs> or like, the promise is lazarus yeah. you know we're yeah, just like, it's like, when are you gonna call it forth man yeah <laughs> it's like this thing is is dead like when lord breathe life into it you we know keep praying we keep asking we keep seeking we keep knocking mm -hmm. we keep doing all the luke 18 1 through 8 stuff that you're talking about we're decreeing or prophesying we're yeah. doing all these things it's like it's not moving yeah these are the oh we, we we prophetically have moved the stone away he's still in there yeah he still has not come out we rolled that stone away eight months ago what's up yeah you know what I'm saying? I mean, right? Yes, That's how it feels. Yes. It's like, this is not working out. I'm following the biblical recipe. What, mm -hmm. what, I'm trying to do barbecue ribs. It keeps coming out like, uh, what, what's those little sandwiches? Pulled uh, pork? Pulled pork, yeah. yeah. It's like, what's <laughs> going on? Joes. I'm just like, yeah, it comes, keeps coming out sloppy joes. I'm just, I'm trying to make the recipe for the, the buns, and it keeps coming out like sourdough. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. You know? <laughs> but I just believe, like, that... It's like God's timing again is so perfect, mm -hmm. and and Jesus' timing when He came to resurrect Lazarus was perfect, because it like you just said it brought it up to a whole nother level, and I believe that God is like saying like, okay, I hear your cries. Jesus heard their cries mm -hmm. when that messenger came. That was their cry. He knew the weight. Their cry of, of the, yeah. like. Wow, our brother is about to die. Please come and do something because we know you are the only one that can do anything in his situation. Just send your word. And Psalm 107. And it said that Jesus remained where he was. That mm -hmm. was that was for a two choice. days. He chose to <laughs> stay there. That's awesome. And to continue on there. Mm-hmm. And it's like there have been so many times where I really believe it's like God is like, I hear your cries. I do. I, I hear every single one, but I'm choosing to stay where I'm at right now because when I do come forward, when I do bring mm -hmm. the, the promises, it is going to take you up to a whole nother level, to a place where it's just like, wow, it's beyond our comprehension, I think, right now mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. It's like we yeah. un our understanding is is still limited and but it's like when god comes and he's going to do what he said he's going to do it's just like oh wow and i think we're going to see things so differently i feel like for me this morning i i really felt kind of just like god kind of opened my eyes to just really see more of the picture of what he's doing and particularly with how the enemy has come because I mean we've personally I've experienced and I think as a whole family we've experienced more spiritual attack in the last like year and a half than ever ever 
<laughs> in my entire life. Like, I mean, really, well, as like, a family. as a family. Yeah. But, but even for me personally, the mm-hmm. intensity, and not all of it is attack. I think a lot of it is, like, through this process, God has been refining us. Well, God's the one that's going to be bringing out issues, showing things. But mm-hmm. then he's also allowing the enemy to come in at times and be like, whoa, that's how how are they going to be formed so just to how god allows he he does he allows the enemy sometimes to come in just like he did with job but what are the results the results are people who are strong people who aren't afraid people who truly believe the lord and take him at his word and know that we hear the voice of the lord and know that just because circumstances are seemingly saying the opposite, that doesn't mean that it isn't true. And we can continue to press on and, and carry on in the endurance. I think this has been a time of learning patience. Huge. Because so much, so many of us live in a world, I think we all live in a world where patience and is very small. It really has been this whole process. I think back in November, there was a lot of the refining fire. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, a lot of times with with gold and metals, they melt them down. And it was almost like... To get out the impurities. Yeah, to get out the impurities. But then if they're going to make it into, they want to cast it into a mold, then they pour it into the mold. Well, and what does it have to do? It has to stay in that mold until it's completely cooled and hardened and Mm -hmm. and i feel like that's kind of what god has done he's he took us through this whole time period of well i'm melting you down i'm getting out those impurities and then i'm going to put you into a mold into something and a mold it basically it constricts something it's it it keeps it in in a certain position so that it will once those you know the casing is taken off it has it stays in that shape Mm -hmm. and it's like i really believe since we've been in nashville like that is what god has been doing he's been keeping us this wilderness in this it's been our mold it really has it's been this mold and he's going to break off the casing Mm -hmm. and we will stand firm in that position in that shape that he has created which is what made for us to constantly be seeking him. Yes. Constantly. See, because God is going to do something that I believe has never been seen before. You know, he's getting ready to open up a door that has never been opened. And a lot of times, a lot of times with, it doesn't even have to be about money, but I believe it is going to definitely involve money. Lots of wealth, because we did a video on wealth transfer. But I also believe it's going to be about the power of God as well. Yeah. See, when the power of God pours out, out on you that's like spiritual wealth Mm -hmm. wealth on any level in any measure maybe you suddenly have a wealth of friends when you didn't have any friends before wealth on any from any angle whether it be money whether it be friends whether it be god moving in your life or whatever it can change people Mm mm-hmm Wealth can change people. And God's like, I want the power to come and it not change my people. Yeah. And have them not go, which is what Deuteronomy was all about. I want you to go in. You're getting ready to go in and have all this wealth. I don't want that to change you. Yeah. You know, I don't want to pour out. I want to be able to pour into you and not have the cup just turn into a, an upside down umbrella. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. It's like, I don't want it to change you. And I believe that's what he's been doing. Yes. He's been forming us so that we won't change, that we will always be like, I don't care. This life that we have right now, oh, it's awesome. It's great. It's wonderful. But I'm still seeking you first thing in the morning. I'm still listening for your heart all day long, you know, as if I have nothing. Yeah. And I'm completely and totally dependent on you. I'm going to keep doing that. Yeah. Because you've shown me, like, that's really what's the most important thing. And not only that, I actually want to do it. Yeah. It's something I want to do. You know, mm-hmm. but we could, but we know how easily, even in our situation, we know how easy it can be to just get caught up in stuff. Yeah. You know, and it's just like we we've had to do that several times. Be like, okay, let's just stop everything. 
this is we're just gonna seek the Lord. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like that's God's like, yes, that's exactly yeah. what I wanted to see in that situation. Okay, now let's go over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and know? and to really be in a place where it's like your life isn't your own. Yeah. Where it's like God is just like he can do anything any day at any yeah. time and know that he has a people that have his heart that are just right. constantly listening to the right. beat of his heart. Now, one of the, can I? Yeah. It's like one of, now one of the things I uh, was getting as we were doing this video here, that you were talking about endurance, and I was going to, I was going to quote that scripture, you know, yes, you have need of steadfast endurance, and I was going to share that. Like, yeah, that's what the scripture says. But I felt like the Lord was like, nope, don't say that. And I felt like the Lord was like, you already have it. I feel like the Lord's saying, that's literally right where you're at right now. Because the uh, scripture says, but you still have need of steadfast endurance so that you can inherit the promise. Did you get that last part? <laughs> but God's like, yeah, he woke up. But uh, God's like, you need, you have need of steadfast endurance. So, so that means, oh, there's still going to be a long time. Mm -hmm. but God's going to be working. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was like, no, you, you're not there. You're at the end. And, and before, when you were talking, I felt like the Lord was saying, like, you guys have completed the third test. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jesus went through his three tests in the wilderness, right? And after that third one, he came out of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the Lord was like, you are right on the other side of having completed your third test. Which is it's why It's like, the that's kind of like where breaking. you're at. Yeah, and why the arc door thing opened. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, okay, cool. And I felt like the Lord's like, I... like. In the scripture, it says apostles are given a charge, but they have to be found trustworthy. Yeah. And I feel like the Lord's like, I have found you trustworthy. And so God's going to place some stuff on us, and then he's going to see what we do. Mm -hmm. Not that he doesn't know or any, like he's going to be informed, but he's going to place some stuff on us, and he's going to see what we do with it. And so I just feel like that's kind of like where we're at right now. That's why the whole breaking the mold thing has come yeah. up. And and um, so I it's super encouraging. And I'm like, wow, this this is exactly what I saw with that um, arc door opening thing. And I'm just like, this is awesome. So I think that's it, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I think so. that's what we got. And it's just, it's really, really cool. Because I just really feel like that. I was like, God's like, you are at the end of your forming. Yeah. You're at the end of your, I'm, I'm getting ready to break you open. I'm getting ready to reveal you. I'm getting ready to display you. I'm getting ready to show you as trophies. People are going to look at you and be like, dang, you know, like that scripture that says you, you're you going to be like a, a crown in the hand of the yeah. Lord and God's going to be like, hey, look at this. Look at that. Yeah. That's awesome. I do. I felt like the Lord said it to me the other day when I was getting all these 212s. He was like, I'm getting ready to display you. And I'm just, it's going to be fun for me to do it, you know? So it's not a battery issue this time. It's a baby issue yeah. who's running low on yeah. fuel. <laughs> so, so we love you guys. Appreciate you guys. And uh, until next video. Yeah. We'll, we'll see, see you later. later. Bye. Bye.